previously on Automotive Tales. So we have changed the discs and pads on the 944 after a bit of a fight. We also managed to break the wear sensor, which it turns out there isn't a replacement in the set with the new pads. However, I think it's all going to have to come apart again at some point because we definitely need a new brake hose. Look at the state of that. How on earth that passed its last MOT is beyond me. As you will have noticed, we cut the sequence slightly short on the brakes. Uh, as we were doing the brakes, we discovered a number of additional jobs that are going to need doing. So we found that some of the screws that hold the discs into the hub were missing. Uh, some of the holes were actually full of bits of aluminium where obviously a previous one had stripped. Um, and we found the brake lines were looking a bit ropey and the fitting kit wasn't the best. So I decided, as I was also late for dinner, uh, to throw the car back together, just see how the car drives. And I've ordered a whole plethora of new parts. I'm going to do a whole other video uh, on that. So to quote Ed China, that is a job for another day. Oh, hello, welcome back to Automotive Tales. On today's episode, we're working on the 944. So the car is back from the garage. We have had the fuel lines looked at. We have got the engine mounts sorted. So it's back to me to finish with the brake lines. So let's get back to the car. So we have the wheel off, the car is up in the air. So we can see some of the jobs uh, that need doing. So you probably remember from an earlier video, we uh, had to do a quick bodge on the brake wear sensor because it had fallen apart. So we've got a new one of those to fit into the caliper. Uh, we're also going to change the bleed nipple out, put a fresh one in with a cap on it so that doesn't corrode. And then we're on to this brake line here, which is starting to look a little bit crusty. And you might also notice a new line here. So while it was in at Porsche Spares UK, the uh, the second they moved it, it decided to spit all of its brake fluid out. It turned out the pipe that's just behind this piece of plastic here was really badly corroded and split and spewed its guts out on their floor. So uh, to allow them to be actually be able to move it and work on it, they fitted a new pipe here, but I've left the original flexi hose in because I said I was going to replace this. I'd already got the parts, so there's no point them fitting a new one for me only to take it off to match it up with the other side. So I need to work out whether I'm going to leave this or replace this with a Cunifer and stainless fitting like I've done on the rest of the car um, to match or whether I just accept this is a brand new line and deal with it. Uh, I probably am going to end up replacing it, but I'll take this out and use it as a template because this goes right the way up into the wheel arch, reappears out the top of the strut tower and runs off to this bulkhead fitting here. So it should be fairly easy to get this out uh, and then replicate this on the bench and just fit the new one in with the the stainless and cunifer, uh, and then it will match up with everything else. Right, so first job uh, is probably going to be to take this off and get the flexi line off down below, uh, and then start to replicate this in, in cunifer. While we're here, I thought I would show you the mess. I was talking about the corrosion. This is going to be the final job, is to sort out the rust on this car. So these wings have been repaired. Now that in itself isn't a bad thing. Uh, the wings are notoriously difficult to get hold of, and they're about 1500 to 2000 pounds for a new OEM wing. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense to repair them, but what's been done by the looks of things is there's been a, a rust hole, somebody has just sanded it back, stuck a big chunk of filler on it, uh, and then repainted it. And all that's happened is that's just rotted out from behind again because this isn't a very good seal, it's an old car, this isn't all perfectly fitted. Whereas what they should have done is cut the rusty metal out, uh, treated what was left, uh, and rebuilt up with new fresh metal, properly coated it to stop it to continue corroding, uh, and then put a skim coat on and, and painted it. Uh, so this has been a bit of a bodge, and it's the same kind of at the back of the sills over there, and on the other side, and some of the bodywork underneath the back behind the rear wheel is in a similar state. So that's going to be a somewhat expensive job. I've been quoted about £2,000 to have the whole lot done, but I think that included replacing the sills as well. So we'll see whether we actually need to go that far because they have been done and they do seem to be fairly solid still. But yeah, that's it just looks terrible, doesn't it? What a state. Hmm. Don't bodge bodywork. It only comes back to bite you in the arse. So a quick hunt through my box of parts. I realised I also bought new bolts and spring washers for the calipers because the ones that came off last time were a little 
questionable. And there's my new bleed nipples. And I've also got a brickware sensor. So let's start to get all the old bits off and then we can start to throw some new bits at it. we've got most of the old hardware off this is the old flexi line you'll note I've cut the end off just to stick back in the caliper to keep any muck out of the caliper because I want to leave that fitting open while I'm working around it you can see the old brake wear sensor that I had to crimp together just to stop the light coming on um, so that's now out and it's all held in this little bracket which is supposed to clip onto the strut tower it was just cable tied on so I suspect I'll end up having to cable tie that back on um, and you can see, so the old fitting is held on with this little spring clip. Now we don't actually need that for the new lines. So you see the new lines have got these, um, these little fittings here. So I just need to span on both sides and that will clamp over that little landing just there, which is what that spring clip goes on. Uh, as you can see, I've still, I've left the original brake line in for now. I just put this little bit in to stop it dripping everywhere. So it's a little piece of pipe that's crimped on a female fitting. So I need to clean all this up. I can put the new brake line in and then I start to remove this sort of new-ish line out and then take that to the bench and get that remade in Cunifer with stainless fittings. The only thing I now need to try and do, is you can probably just see the bolts here that hold the caliper in. You can see one there, the other one a bit further down. I've got the lower one off and I need to get a spanner in here, but it's an 18, which is a bit unusual. So I've been to find an 18 mil spanner. I've got the low one off the impact gun, but there isn't enough space in here with this little bracket up here to get the impact gun or even a ratchet or anything in there. So hopefully the 18 mil spanner will solve that. And actually this is this is the little thing that the brake wear sensor goes in. It's like a little adapter that goes in off to the wiring harness at the back here. Then that black piece I showed you a second ago clamps around that and then it'll be just cable tied to the strut here to get it out of the way. So lots still to do, but lots of progress already made. <sighs> it's a bit warm today, so I think uh, time for a cheeky drink and then carry on. I have got the copper line out that goes from the bulkhead up onto the engine bay all the way down through the strut tower and to where the flexi line links in. So I'm going to replicate this. I've got my section of cunifer I've already cut off and you can see I've already started to straighten it. So I'm going to use my nice little pipe straightener, get a nice straight length of this and then we're going to flare the ends, not forgetting to put the fittings on obviously, uh, and then try and replicate this shape as best we can. And then pop this back in the car and that's one side all done. Fit 
So, first side is finished. We have plumbed in the new line, which starts here and goes up to the top. There's the new line. Not quite as neat as the other one that the guys at Porsche Spares UK did. Uh, I suspect they've had a lot more experience than I have, but it, it does what it needs to do, and it is a nice Cunifer line with the stainless steel fitting on here, so all is good. And then from there, you've got the flexi line, which comes all the way into the caliper here. We've got our new bleed nipple on here. We've got our new brake wear sensor, which is all plumbed in and cable tied nicely out of the way. And the only other thing we did while this was all apart, I put in some new screws that hold the disc in. This side actually had two of them in, but uh, the other side only had one from memory when we did the discs and pads. So we ordered a whole new set of those to make sure the discs are nicely centered stops you getting any brake wobble if it's not perfectly centered on the hub uh, and the other thing we were going to do was the furniture here that holds the pads in i ordered a new set of these when we did the discs and pads and it still hasn't arrived um so design 911 it's been like nine months now you could literally birth a child quicker uh, however i found somewhere else that does have them so i'm going to stick a set on order this evening and then when i come to put the teledial wheels back on I can do that and make all that nice kind of breaking furniture nice and new and fresh so I can be fairly confident in it. Uh, right, now it's time to put the wheels back on, get it on the deck and then disappear over into that corner of the workshop to do the other side. <laughs> okay, so we have got the driver's side wheel off. Uh, much the same affair in here. You can see a grotty brake line down there, so that's got to come off. Uh, brake wear sensor was actually complete on this side, but already slightly worn, so put a nice fresh one on there. Uh, it's already got a relatively new bleed nipple, but again, we'll stick a matching one on, uh, same as the other side. The only thing I've got to do on this side is work out which of these fittings is actually the brake line that goes down into the wheel arch, because there's quite a lot that go off down into this strut tower here. Um, so yeah, best start taking things apart then, hadn't I? So the folks at Porsche Spares UK had freed off the other line to replace the broken brake hose they found, which made my life nice and easy. This side, however, is not playing the game. To the point where I've tried to undo this, I've now got this spanner stuck on the line. So, um, yeah, time for my favorite tool, the Cutty Cutty tool. Say goodbye. Well, uh, this escalated quickly. Um, you'll notice a lack of a wheel arch liner, uh, which has identified a relatively clean wheel arch, which is good. Um, but I couldn't figure out where the brake hose was going. I noticed the spanner is still stuck. I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, and then I found this, and then this, and this, which would be the ABS pump hidden behind the wing. Which seems like a neat solution, unless you have a bit of a thunk from the side, but also makes it incredibly difficult to get to. So when you want to change a pipe in here, you need to get a spanner in the other side of the pump, because sod's law, it's obviously the pipe at the back you need to undo. And there's a bit of plastic in the way here, and this thing hanging down here is the indicator, which is right next to the pump, so therefore right in the way. Why the hell would you put an ABS pump behind the wing, behind an arch liner, hidden away in the wheel well where it's going to get covered in crap? What a moronic design. Anywho, I've managed to get the pipe off with a bit of ingenuity. So I cut the hose down here, put a spanner on, ran the spanner around the pipe. You can see the clip where it's missing. Um, and then was able to get at it using the hole here for the indicator so you can just about make out where the uh, where the fitting was that was um fun so uh, i have got the offending line out uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to remanufacture this um even if it was an absolute pain to get out of the car so same thing again i'm going to get some cunifer straight a nice long length out and then slowly start to form this shape once I've flared, at least one of the ends, I might wait to flare the other end this time. <sighs> this is a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. So that is the line made up. It's roughly about right. It should be good enough. I can manipulate it into the wheel arch once I get it back outside. So now time to brave 
the rain because it's minging out there and go and fit that back to the car. And with that, everything is back together. That was incredibly not easy at all. First of all, you remember I had the spanner caught on here. I could not get it off that fitting and I was scared of going to break the bracket here, which I needed for the refit. So I had to cut the old fitting off underneath with a hacksaw in a really awkward position and the fitting was loose and flapping around, which made it even more difficult. But after a small eternity, I finally got that off. Then it was time to fit the brake hose into the ABS unit in this stupidly tight spot. That was torturous at best. So once I got that fitted, getting the line all bent into shape was fairly easy. So I think that's a fairly neat job. It's not perfect. It was a little bit over length, but I'm always scared of cutting the line too short and having it strained. But it all seems to be fine. So that's all back in. The only thing I've got left to do is just to fit this brake wear sensor. Then it's on to bleeding the brakes. But what I'll probably do is fit the arch liner back in so that once the brakes are bled, I can drop this side back down, go and do the other side. And we're actually relatively close to being finished. <sighs> it was only a half hour job that turned into a three hour job. Lovely. So welcome back to the studio. We had to break at that point because we'd run out of time to work on the car. So we are back now again at the workshop so I can continue doing brakes. So next job is to fill the system with brake fluid and bleed it all through. Uh, we've also, in the meantime, had a delivery. So these are not the parts I ordered back in summer last year. Uh, they still haven't arrived, uh, but I found another supplier, Fraser Parts, who have provided me with the brake pin kit. So these are actually in reasonable condition on the car, considering it's been well used. Um, but I want to replace them with nice new ones, so I've got a new baseline to move forward. So we've got a full set of um, springs for the pads, and the little bars that hold the uh, the pads into the caliper. I'm sure they've got a proper name, but it's basically a brake fitting kit for both sides. So we're going to get those on, bleed the system through. Uh, hopefully we've got no leaks because I've already put the arch liner back, which was possibly a mistake. And then hopefully get the car back on the ground and on four wheels. If we can get to that point, then the car is ready to go off to the body shop to start looking at that hideous amount of rust we pointed out earlier. So without further ado, Back to the car. So we are back under the bonnet of the 944. You will probably just about be able to make out that I've got the Easy Bleed plumbed into here. You won't be able to see the Easy Bleed bottle because I've got it resting on something in the engine bay down underneath this wheel. And therefore I should probably explain why there's a wheel sitting on top of the engine. Unlike a Panda, the spare wheel is not stored under the bonnet of a 944. This is here to stop the car getting covered in brake fluid. So top tip from one of the viewers, you shouldn't use more than 15 PSI in your Easy Bleed kit. So while you can use the tyre on your vehicle, you shouldn't use the normal tyre pressure, which can be anywhere from 20 up to sort of 35, 40 PSI. The system apparently is only rated for about 15 PSI. Now, I would know this if I hadn't rubbed all of the numbering and all the text off the bottle over the years I've used it, and if I still had the destructions in the box, but I don't. So, really useful piece of information. Sounds like somebody has had experience of putting too much pressure through one of these systems and the whole thing going poof. And nobody wants an engine bay covered in corrosive brake fluid. So thank you very much. Uh, you didn't leave your name uh, and I can't tell who you are from your YouTube account. So do please drop a, a note below and let me know who you are. Uh, maybe I'll send you some little automotive uh, goodies. Um, but yeah, top tip. So try and use only 15 PSI. So I've got an old tire here, it's very well worn. Uh, that I've let down to 15 PSI so I can plug it into the system and should hopefully not run risk of blowing the top off. Now, luckily, it's never happened to me before, but I'm not one to take that risk. So this is a really great top tip. Find yourself a spare wheel that you can let the pressure down to what you need to and use that to run your system. It also means that your car won't have a flat tire by the time you finish bleeding the brakes, which is quite useful. So system is all set up. As you can see, it's ready to plumb in here. So I'm just going to go and loosen off the uh, bleed nipple over on this side and start bleeding the system. So I have bled this side. I need to get the car back up on the other side and do the, the other side. I've only got one jack, so I think I'm going to have to put the wheel back on to put this down to do the other side. But then I'm probably going to have to come back to check it's bled all the way through the ABS unit. It's run for a little while. It's all nice and clean, but I don't want any sort of spongy bubbles in the brakes but 
Looking around the car, so far so good. I don't see any leaks anywhere, which is promising. So fingers crossed, everything is nice and leak tight. Okay, so I lied. I do actually have a second jack, but I don't have a handle for it. But nothing that can't be solved with an adjustable spanner and an extension bar. So now we have both sides off at the same time, which is super handy. So now I'm going to bleed this side of the system and then I'm going to go back over to the other side, bleed that again and then back over here to bleed this one more time just to make sure there's no air locks anywhere in the system. So here goes. And just like that, this side is bled. So time to go back over to the other side. So far, so good. Doesn't look like we've got any leaks down here, which is good. We've had the pressure on twice, so we'd see anything if it was starting to leak, I think, by now. So, uh, crack on. So, result, we have bled both sides again and all seems to be good. I'm going to leave the Easy Bleed kit on, it's not pressurised. Um, just to see if we've got any leaks. So there's a bit of time to repressurize it in a bit and leave it for a while and see what happens. In the meantime, I am gonna put the fitting kit in for the brakes. However, I have noticed one thing about this fitting kit. You see the nice hole in the end of this dowel, this pin that holds the uh, pads in. Um, it's missing the one like most likely to get lost or break part, the little R clip that goes through here. Why? Surely that's the point of replacing this. The thing you're most likely to break or lose is that R-clip. Madness. Just so you can get an idea just quite how delicate the little R-clips are. That's one compared to the size of my thumb. Luckily the ones that we've got on the car appear to be stainless steel. So they're not corroded, um, but very easily lost. So when taking the old pins out, I've been putting the R-clips back in so I don't lose them until the new pins are in which they are. So now I've got to fish around in the back, try not to lose this by dropping it on the floor. Um, and uh, that's it, I've got the uh, clips changed over. Right, we have tested all of the brake system and there appears to be no leaks anywhere. And I'm now sat in the car, I've had a good firm press on the brake pedal and there's no squidginess in it whatsoever. It feels very nice actually, very solid brake pedal. So that's a result, all the new brake furniture is in, all the rusty and horrible brake lines have been replaced. We've got stainless steel braided hoses, which should give us a better feel overall. The new discs and pads, I mean, they've only done about a thousand miles. They still look near enough brand new. We've got all fresh fluid in and we've got all new fittings on the actual pads themselves to hold it all in. So all in all, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. So one last thing to check, just make sure that everything clears by running the steering wheel from one side to the other. Good. It's, uh, it's nice to be back inside this car, but it's still not quite ready for the road. So now the brakes are done, I'm gonna try and get it booked in at a body shop and sort out that horrible rust. But in the words of Ed China, that is a job for another day. And with that, we are done for this episode of Automotive Tales. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to, you know, the like, share, subscribe nonsense. Uh, you can also check us out on Patreon, where we have literally one person that sponsors us. So thank you, Alex, for continuing to sponsor the challenge. The challenge? Well, yeah, the challenge that is the 944 that you sold us. Um, but thank you for continuing to sponsor the channel as well. Uh, so until next time, bye for now.